I'd like to talk about a pair of powered speakers with you today from Kanto, K-A-N-T-O. This is a Canadian outfit and the model number is the YU4, letter Y, letter U, number 4. £290 is the price for this pair of powered speakers. They come in a wide variety of finishes, can't fault them for the finishes, lots of choice. The uh, speakers themselves, normal with powered speakers, you'd have a sort of master speaker where that's the speaker which goes into your main socket and has all the inputs and outputs and all the controls. There's a weedy, in this case, very sort of thin cable that goes to a, your second speaker, which is this sort of dumb speaker, the passive speaker. But when it's all turned on, it's all powered, so it all does the right thing. And it's, it's, uh, um, uh, it's very easy to set up, no problems there. Nice that the cable itself is an IEC cable, that sort of kettle lead. I would advise you to upgrade that as soon as you can to improve uh, sound quality. Um, the front of the speakers, uh, you can see uh, a tweeter, soft dome, 25 millimeters. Underneath that is a mid-bass unit uh, made out of Kevlar, and then that's 102 millimeters. Just underneath that is a little sensor, so the little sensor for the remote control. Now the remote control is not one of these weedy little credit card jobs, which is very irritating, I find, with that little sort of, you know, dead skin button thing. But uh, it has some physicality, about half the size of a TV controller, that sort of size. The speakers themselves, they're, they're stand mounted, that you can put on the shelf. They're little dinky things, just over three kilograms in, in weight. And very nicely made, very good. The rear, well, I was going to say it has a full range of connectivity, but it's not really the case, oddly. So you do get RCA sockets there. You'll get a three and a half millimeter auxiliary connection to, which is great. There's a connection for a phono amp, which is uh, intriguing. Not all powered speakers have this. Means basically you can plug in a turntable and you can play vinyl directly. So you don't have to be buying yourself a phono amplifier. Great for value for money if you're low on budget. It's so the phono, phono amp is already included. Great. Uh, there's an optical, in fact, there's two optical ports at the back, but no coax. No idea why. And that, that confuses me a bit. Don't know. Uh, there's a USB port at the back, but it's only for servicing, so updates and so on. So you can't plug in a USB stick full of digital files. There's no way to directly access a USB uh, source. So, again, no idea why. Haven't got a clue. What you can do is, is plug in a digital audio player through the optical port. Of course, you can do that. And you've got Bluetooth as well. Uh, that's also another way of sourcing music. Um, and uh, uh, I did all these tests. So what I did, as we're talking about these sources, I brought in a National and Kern uh, digital audio player. I plugged that into the optical port. I brought in a Riga RP1 turntable. <coughs> plugged that into the, <coughs> excuse me, plugged that into the uh, Ferno amp. And I used uh, an iPhone 8. I've gone froggy. I'm sorry, I do apologise. <coughs> so if I just collapse, just call an ambulance for me, will you, if you don't mind? Just, you know, be neighbourly. And uh, there's a guy who's on YouTube who's just died. Anyway, so, uh, so you know, just to let you know, <coughs> if it gets any worse. So where was I before I was suffering in intensive care? What was I doing? So yes, uh, uh, sources. iPhone 8 is what I used for Bluetooth. So um, I used, they were my three main sources, really. The Bluetooth connection for the iPhone, very simple. The YU4s are constantly looking to pair, which is very nice, quite sweet, really. And so when I went to my uh, settings on the iPhone 8, turned on Bluetooth, bang, 
there was the YU4 just waiting to connect, and that was good. So it was very quick. Then I played a very horrible suite of uh, lossy files. One was uh, Marvin Gaye, another one was, I think it was a Kylie. And I was waiting for this harshness to come through on the YU4s, and I didn't get it. It was quite nice. It was quite presentable. There was no listening fatigue. I didn't get any sort of like, oh, brightness in my ears. It was reasonable. Because it's a lossy file, it's, it's not particularly nice quality. Streaming as well is not the best delivery source of music and information. So all those things are compromised. But the end result was nice, listenable. Something, you know, good to listen to while you're doing other things. Then I put the Astell and Kern in the back. I played some high resolution files, a bit of Bob Marley, some Dire Straits, that type of thing. Uh, 24 bit 96 type of quality. Obviously, more information being pumped in sounds a lot better. The one thing I was getting, the one aspect of the personality of these speakers that was really hitting me was that sound lived more in the mid range and above. So there was not a great deal of bass. Bass had overslept, bass had missed the bus and didn't turn up. So you were getting some lower mid-range, okay, or very upper bass, but it was mainly mid-range treble. And so you, you lost that sort of broad presentation, that broad tonal balance. It wasn't really there. So does that mean the sound was rubbish? Well, no. No, 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 no. It was still quite nice. Not amazing, I wouldn't do cartwheels, but still quite nice. What, what the YU4s really gave me was a, a sort of um, detailed accuracy. It was, it was pretty much, we'll put it this way. It was, uh, it was quite an agile sound. Very sharp and quick, you know. Let's take a, a drummer. It sounded like, if I, if I was hearing a drum, a drum solo, on one of these tracks that I played. It sounded like the drummer had, had a really good night's sleep and he was really enthusiastic. And, you know, he was, he'd had a good breakfast and he was raring to go and he was sharp. And he was, you know, he just had a pay rise the day before. He's happy, he's raring to go. That sort of thing. There was no sluggishness about this performance. So the agility of the sound is what I really liked. Like I say, you missed that deep bass thing. The Astell and Kern gave me uh, more information, as I say, but you still lost a little bit of that bassy thing. I also played uh, some vinyl. So I plugged in the, the Riga, the RP1, which is a great turntable. But the sound wasn't great. And it's all down to the Phono amp. Now, the Phono amplifier is a specialist, delicate little thing. You know, you want to treat it with kid gloves. It does a very specialist job of amplifying the tiny, tiny signal from a stylus. You don't want to be putting it in a, power, in a pair of powered speakers because of all the vibration and the noise from other parts of the speaker. It masks and interferes with its job. So it was no surprise that when I listened to the RP1, the mid-range sort of rolled off a little bit. The bass was a little bit flabby, treble was a bit pinched. It wasn't great. Again, it's a choice and choices are great. And that's what powered speakers give you. They give you choices. So it's a good way of listening to vinyl in a convenient way. It's a, it's a, you know, if you're, if you're in a, a, a bedroom environment, you haven't got an awful lot of space, you've got a small footprint, it's a good way to connect up a, a turntable uh, if you're, if you're uh, um, again, if you're moving around, if you're working, and you just want to have a, a play of vinyl, you don't want to sit in a formal listening room environment, you know, or very sort of just so. Um, if you're if you're doing other things, or you just want a casual listen of a of a of a, an album, vinyl album, this is a it's a it's a way of doing it. It's fine. It's it's not bad. It's just not amazing, but convenient. Great, a great sort of lifestyle choice, shall we say. So 
the power speakers are giving you a lot of options here, but there are compromises with all with the sound. Okay, so am I saying that these speakers are poor? Well, no. Like I say, the sound has plus points. We have lots of options of connectivity. Maybe not as much connectivity as as, as I'd like. So you might say, well, you know, of course it's going to sound like this. It's, of course the bass isn't going to be present because they're dinky little speakers. What do you expect? Huh? I wouldn't blame that. I wouldn't blame the size. I have a pair, of, on reference, I have a pair of uh, Tune 4 speakers. These are from a company called XTZ. And they're just slightly bigger. I mean, a little bit. Much better in terms of bass. So I look at the inherent design of the YU4s. The, uh, inside is a Class D amplifier. I don't know whether that's a cause or something else going on. But I wouldn't blame the size as being the reason why bass is so absent. Now, like I say, there are still plenty of good points in terms of what the YU4s can do. And I wanted to do another test, and that proved a little bit more enlightening and added more value and more interest to the YU4s. And that test was a near field test. Near field, in case you don't know, is literally when you're using speakers near to you. If you've got speakers hooked, you're sitting down at a desk and you hook speakers into your computer and you have them just like, just close, that's near field. And you can do that with the YU4s. You can't do that with, with all uh, powered speakers, but you can do that with the YU4s. What I didn't get from Canto was uh, a, a neat little pair of stands which are which sort of open up like a crocodile mouth and they, they tip the, the YU4s upwards a little bit to you. I didn't get those, so I couldn't test those, but it showed me that the company has near field listening as part of its design. So I checked it out. I did that very thing. And they were great. Well, not perfect, but much better, much more exciting, much more engaging. The balance of the, because you've got to lower the volume a bit, everything's a bit closer to you, so it changes the personality of the sound. And the personality was much more interesting. Um, the, there was more, more bass, uh, more, uh, more, more sort of focus, precision, in terms of, of the music that was coming to me. And... Um, I was more interested in, in it, or it was more interesting. It sort of it brought, it sort of sucked me in more to the to the music. It engaged me, and uh, that was great. The one thing that I, I really loved, I mean, all of those things, you still had a little bit of the of the of the issues. You know, you could you could you could still recognise a little bit of those earlier issues I mentioned, although the issues were not as, as grand and as and as major and as. And it's flawed. But you could, you could send. The one thing that really grabbed me, though, was the sound stage. This, the sound stage is, is, is how the music is laid out in front of you, how it's presented to you. So it's a sound stage coming from a stage to your ears. The sound stage was brilliant. It was brilliant. What I mean by that is normally when you're listening to speakers, you... you on the majority of, of, of occasions, you're sitting in your listening chair in a listening room environment, and you have your tweeters generally around ear level pointing sort of at you. It varies with speaker to speaker, but, you know, generally. You didn't have to do that with, with these speakers, the YU4s, in, a, in, a, in, a, in this computer setup I had near field. I actually had them much lower than my ears. I mean, they were way down. But it didn't matter. Up towards my ears were better, yes, more detail. But if they were down below, it didn't matter. It still produced an almost holographic 3D effect, which was very nice. I was very impressed. So I was more impressed with them as near-field speakers than lifestyle. To me, the near-field option was almost a priority. So they are... I would see them almost as near field speakers with a, a listening room, a general listening room secondary role, you know, that way around, rather than listening room and then near field as a bonus. So that's how I would recommend them. That's how I would see them. If you want to know more, because I'll stop here, 
And if you think, you know, what about this? What about that? There is a more structured, formal review I have already done. If you, if you need something a bit more detailed and in-depth, if you're asking questions in your head right now, then don't worry. It's okay. I've sorted it for you. Down below is a link straight to my site, and you've got that formal review. All the techie bits, structured sound, conclusions, high-res images, all of that. It's all there. So click down below. You can read it on my site just in case you need more. If this, is, if this is only whetted your appetite and you need more, click that link and that'll take you straight there. By all means, comment. I'd be nice to know if you, if you already use the YU4s. What do you think of them? Am, am I talking a lot of rubbish here? Uh, do, do you disagree? Do you agree? Do you like them? Do you dislike them? What are you hooking them up with? Are you using them near field? Uh, or do you have them just as, a, you know, just as a basic speakers for hi-fi? How do you use them? What do you connect to them? I'd love to know. I'd like to learn from, from you know, real life users, as it were, what you're actually, you're actually using on a day-to-day -day basis. So tell me, comments below, please. Uh, if you can keep them clean, polite, no swearing, because this is a family channel. And then I'll be a happy bunny and we'll be great friends. So love to know more from you. Comments, please. And I will see you in the next video. Hope you can join me then.